has sinned. The sinful habits of his life have brought him to a point. And it's brought him to a very, very low point. Where he has been kind of clobbered by, by the results of his actions and sin is weighing heavy on him. But, but look at the impact on the, the name of his God. And he's done that. He's done it him, he's done that. First, look at Samson's situation. He gets himself into that situation where he's betrayed, blinded, so that looks like the end of his Philistine bashing ministry then. Finished for the ministry and bound in Gaza. But, but it's so much worse than that because he's become responsible for the name of his God getting dragged through the dirt. That is a higher order situation altogether. Absolutely more than any believer wants to get into, ever. So that's his situation. What are his priorities in that awful situation? He's blind, bound, taunted, disappointed with himself. Disillusionment cannot have been far from his door. But when he works out the layer of the place he's being tormented in, where his God is being mocked, when he works out who is where in that building, there's this lot on the roof, and there's the lords of the Philistines down here, and architecturally, hang on, there's two pillars here. Once he's completed his structural survey of the edifice, checks on his own haircut, he's not yet down and out. He's going to finish, but he's going to do it well. He's going to do it well. And God has called Samson to clarify the boundaries for the Israelites by engaging the Philistines, doing it single-handedly. He's still called to that. One big last effort then. The opportunity's there. Samson is ready for one more huge heroic effort, and it will cost him his life. Gone are the days of the, the hot-blooded stuff. This is <coughs> cold-blooded, courage born of faith. And it will cost him his life. But God has called Samson uniquely to this role of bashing Philistines. And for him, repentance, turning away from your sin, turning to embrace God and his plan for your life, for him, that's repentance. For Samson, practical down to earth repentance is demolition shaped. Now, perhaps there are those of us who, in our more boyish moments, wish that God had called us to a career in demolition, right? Why? Wow, yeah. But that's not what this is about. This is not, hey, smash something. No, 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 no. This, in the providence of God, is the way that he's dealing with those who oppose him profoundly, who would dis bring disgrace on his name. They are beyond redemption. They are up for judgment. And you know, as far as Samson is concerned, repentance really costs. Sin is expensive, right? It costs you. And correcting it by repentance also exacts a price of us. But it's still the way to go. And Samson died disgraced, derided and alone. He had no way of knowing whether his family and the people who mattered to him would know the real achievement of his last few breaths. He didn't know that. He had no idea how awful his last moments would feel, crushed beneath the weight of the collapsing temple portico with all those Philistines on it. He couldn't be sure, he really couldn't see very much that his plan was actually going to work. And he almost certainly died without knowing the effect of what he'd done. But Samson was back on the hymn sheet. And it can cost. It can take extreme heroism to do that. This was extremely heroic. The flawed hero Samson got all things straightened out in the end. He finished well.